Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are there, ready and available to answer your questions. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. And lastly, this recording will be available a week from today at strivescan.com backslash Pennsylvania. We are currently in session F5, where my mouse is circling. And this will also be the order of our presenters for tonight. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first presenter from, from the University of Rhode Island. Thank you. Okay. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm Brad Cocking. I'm the regional admission advisor for the Mid-Atlantic area. I'm based in New Jersey, so I am your admission counselor. If you ever have any questions after tonight, feel free to contact me. My email is on our website, on our admission website. So if you haven't been to campus, this is a picture of our quad area right in the middle of campus. Uh, we are located in Southern Rhode Island, about 10 to 15 minutes away from the beach area. We're about 35 minutes south of Providence. So that's the closest big city, about 20 minutes from Newport, hour and a half from Boston, two and a half from New York City. We are a medium-sized university with just under 15,000 undergrad. So campus itself is all walking distance. Uh, you're not taking shuttles to classes or anything like that. Um, we're also a diverse campus. About 48% of our students are from out of state and international. The entire student body is represented by 48 states, 68 nations. We also have an excellent faculty on campus. You see the student to faculty ratio, 16 to 1, 86% have doctoral or terminal degrees. And we like to keep your class sizes smaller. So about 76% have less than 30 students. You will have some bigger lecture halls your first year or two. That's mostly in your general education classes. As far as housing, you're not required to live on campus, but 94% of our freshmen live on campus in one of our 24 residence halls. Most freshmen will live in one of our living and learning communities where you can choose to live with other students within your major or within your academic college. For example, the College of Engineering has one where all the freshman engineering students are in one area. So you have similar classes together. They have study groups. It's very helpful freshman year. Then after your first year, you have different on-campus options. You see at the bottom there, we have full suites, semi-suites, and a few different apartment complexes on campus as well. Um, so I don't have time to tell you about any specific majors, but you can choose from over 90 majors, 80 plus minors across our eight degree granting colleges here. Um, you can also apply as undeclared. You really have two years to declare a major with the exception of nursing, engineering, and our six year doctor of pharmacy program. You wanna apply right into those majors going in as a freshman. Those are our three most competitive programs and they have different requirements than the other majors. Uh, besides the majors, we have URIs, lots of opportunities outside of the classroom. We have plenty of internship programs all over the country, all over the world. Uh, study abroad is very popular at URI. Every major, every student will have an opportunity to study abroad if you want to. Uh, we're very much a research inst institution as well. Uh, we have plenty of uh, research opportunities on and off campus. We're side by side with faculty mentors in the field. Um, we do have an honors program. The Common App will ask you if you're interested in the honors program. Um, so you just check yes or no. Um, if you want to find out more details about the honors program and the minimum criteria to be eligible, uh, they do have a great website. And then the stat at the bottom, 90% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in grad school within six months of graduation. So we're proud of that and that's very important. Um, there's always a lot of events happening on campus. We have 18 Division I sports teams. Basketball is our most popular sport. This picture here is the Ryan Center where the team plays. So you can see it's a great atmosphere for home games. Um, there are also a lot of other big events here at the Ryan Center. We have huge concerts, big comedians come up, um, and plenty of other events on campus as well, like alumni and family weekend. And you can view um, all the other events on our website. Besides the events, we have over 300 student clubs and organizations. Um, so many of our students are involved in at least one club or organization, whether that's athletics, Greek life, um, academic clubs, fun outdoor clubs, one of our centers and programs there at the bottom. So like I said, many of our students like to get involved in the community in some capacity. 
Um, so this is the application process. Uh, we are on the Common App. It's a $65 app fee. The essay is on the Common App. So you want to submit your Common App first. That opens up in August. Then we'll need your official high school transcript. Your counselor will send that. And then at least one letter of recommendation. Most students send between one and three, and that's fine. Um, definitely send a counselor a letter, maybe a counselor and a teacher, counselor and a coach. It's really up to you. The big difference this year and next year is we are test optional for all majors. Uh, so totally up to you if you want to send your SAT or ACT score. We do super score both. So if you choose to take one or both, I recommend taking it multiple times to get your highest score. And then at the bottom there, you see our middle 50% profile. This is half of our admitted students are in those GPA and test score ranges. Um, so this is half. People had higher GPAs, higher test scores, lower GPAs, lower test scores that were admitted. This just gives you a general idea. Um, and this is for every major except nursing, engineering, and our doctor of pharmacy program. And then the deadlines on the right, early action is December 1st, which is later than most colleges. Um, I always recommend everybody apply early action, but especially those competitive majors. There's really no negative to applying early. You get a decision sooner. You also get priority consideration for scholarships applying early action. And then the other deadline is February 1st. Once you complete your application, you're automatically considered for merit scholarships. So no separate application there. We do have a wide range all the way up the full ride. Um, eligibility is based on your academic performance in high school. Of course, we'll look at your GPA and your transcript closely. We like to see a challenging course selection. Um, also letters of recommendation, any activities, involvement and leadership in your school and community, that's all considered in the review process. Um, so if you are interested, I definitely recommend taking advantage of our virtual options for now. That website here at the bottom, that has all of our virtual events um, through the admission office. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. And we're adding more events as we go. So I think I'm just about out of time here. So thank you, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. The next representative is from Manor College. Sorry about that. <laughs> My computer is taking forever to load. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Jen Peters and I am from Manor College. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Manor College real quick. We were founded in 1947 by the Ukrainian sisters of St. Basil the Great. So by territory, we pretty much are a Catholic college. Um, location wise, we're about 30 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia, um, about in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. So if you know where the Willow Grove Mall is, we're about 15 minutes away from there. We enroll about 700 students, so we definitely are on the smaller side. Um, predominantly, do, we do have female students, um, and we do represent 43 different countries in the respect that we do have international students on campus. And for that reason, we do offer housing. We are a predominantly commuter school, but of course, for students who have that interest in living on campus, come on and stay on campus with us. Um, why you should choose Manor as well, we do have those smaller class sizes. So we have about 12 to 1 being our faculty to student ratio. Um, and from the moment you start an application with us, you're going to get that personalized attention that we promise. Um, we do not have any lecture halls on campus. A lot of classes are very small, um, but a lot of our programs do have hands-on experience, such as different internships. As you can see from the background, we have Gabriella, who's one of our dental hygiene students. She's working on a patient. That's another great way to show hands-on experience. We offer free tutoring, and as well as we are very, very safe for 24 seven security. Um, we have been voted, we have been voted the safest campus in Pennsylvania for five years in a row. Um, and we are easily accessible from public transportation. The 28 and the 24 step the buses drive right past our campus. And for those students who wanna have a car on campus, we offer free parking. The application process is pretty simple with us. You're gonna start out with filling out our free application at manor.edu backslash apply. And from there, we're just gonna need your high school transcript. We are SAT optional. Um, so no have to worry about sending in those SAT scores. Um, for a lot of our programs, we also do not require an essay or a letter of recommendation. 
Um, our programs that do tend to be either dental hygiene or vet tech, and those are our very popular capped programs. Um, but once we receive all of your documentation, we can give you a decision in about two weeks time. Here are some of the programs that we do offer. We do offer both two-year and four-year options, associates and bachelor's degrees in our spans of division and professional studies, arts and sciences. We also have more in the business and professional studies school, education and our division of allied health where our most popular dental hygiene program is, expanded functions dental assisting program and veterinary technology. A good thing you can do at Manor is stack your credentials. So if you wanna start off with a two-year degree and then end your time at Manor with a four-year degree, that is possible. We also have a lot of partnerships in place such as our three plus three law program, which is a partnership with Widener Dell Law School and a two plus two nursing program, which we have a partnership with LaSalle University. Um, um, we also, no matter what you study, plan to have academic advising as a part of your time here at Manor. Um, and if you do need additional help, such as personal or career counseling, we offer that as well. Um, in regards to tuition and fees, we are definitely on the more affordable side. You can expect to probably pay around $18,000 as a sticker price. But once financial aid is applied, that number drops dramatically for commuters and residents alike. In regards to Manor scholarships, we do review every application for a scholarship. They are off of case by case basis. And this is just a few of what we do offer in regards to criteria. criteria. Um, in regards to student and clubs and activities, we do have a great amount of things to get involved in over on campus. One thing we do offer as a resource for our students is a free food pantry, um, just so for those students who may be struggling to find where their next meal is coming from. Um, we can definitely, you know, provide that for our students, health services, fitness center, career center, and a lot of other different clubs to get involved in, such as student senate, horse care team, and a lot more. And even if there isn't a club that perhaps you want to see on campus, you can make that happen with a simple process. In regards to athletics, we are part of the USCAA. We are en route to D3, so let's hope we can get there soon enough. Um, but here are some of the sports that we do offer both, for both men's and women's. These are scouted for, but we do take walk-ons as well. Um, and if you want to come and join us at Manor College, here is a QR code if you want to hover over your screen real quick, um, just so you can see a lot of our virtual admissions event. And we are also welcoming in-person tours by appointment only. Um, so if you definitely want to come and check us out in an in-person setting, we highly recommend doing that. Um, and of course, if you do have any questions, here's my contact information. You could take a picture of this really quick and I'll get in touch with you of how you can start an application at Manor College and find why you belong here. Great, thank you. Uh, just a friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to so feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Um, our representatives are there to answer your questions um, about any part of the application process or about their school specifically. The next representative is from the Uni University of Pittsburgh, Greensburg. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, really glad that you're here. So, with, uh, so I'm a part of the University of Pittsburgh Greensburg. Um, might be a little confused because you might have heard of the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, there is more than one campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, They're called uh, regional campuses. We are one at uh, Greensburg. So at the Greensburg campus, obviously University of Pittsburgh has been around for over 225 years. Our campus has the most winners of the Chancellor's, Distinguished, uh, Chancellor's Award for Distinguished Teaching. Uh, that's of any campus, including the Pittsburgh campus, and we were also labeled best bang for your buck in the Northeast, uh, in one of the best liberal arts colleges and best criminal justice degrees by the Washington Monthly 2020 College Guides and Rankings. On our campus, we have about 1,400 students on our campus. This fluctuates between 14 and 1,500 students. We are on the smaller side. Our average class size is about 21 students. This leads to a faculty-student ratio to about 1 to 18. Uh, so you are going to have that hands-on experience, one-to-one -one attention with a professor, somebody who is an expert in their field uh, pretty regularly. As far as majors and minors, we do have 31 majors, 26 minors, and four certificate programs on our campus. We also have six pre-professional studies that includes things like pre-med, pre-dental, pre-physical therapy, pre-pharmacy, uh, pre-law, things of that nature. Our top five majors right now are biology, management, psychology, criminal justice, and nursing you'll find that those majors are very far apart in uh, in the spectrum as far as subject areas. You can find all of those majors here at this part of our website. 
As far as freshman admissions is concerned, our average incoming freshman has around a 3.4 average GPA. One of the things to note that we are going to be tasked optional through 2023. So, uh, however, our average SAT coming in is around 1100 or a 22 ACT composite score. In order to complete your application, we do need three things. We need your application submitted. We do need a copy of your high school transcript or the self-reported academic record, which is a transcript you can transpose onto your application. It's essentially a copy paste. And if you choose to, you can send your SAT or, uh, or S a ACT or SAT scores, excuse me. We strongly recommend an essay. However, it is not required. And we also recommend letters of recommendation as well. However, those are not required to complete your application. As far as nursing admissions, this is the only program that has a higher admissions criteria, whereas the last slide showed averages. These are the absolute requirements that we must have in order to admit you to nursing, and that is a 3.2 GPA or higher. Uh, test optional, but really looking for 1170 or higher or a 24 ACT or higher, and you must have chemistry with two additional lab sciences. All three must be with a lab component. We do offer housing. We have five total residence halls that account for 12 total buildings. Some of our residence halls have multiple buildings associated with them. You can find them all here on our website at this link. One of the most important things is on the website, we do have videos of all of the residence halls and of the rooms in, inside of them. So definitely take a look at that. One of the things you'll also see um, on our website is the ability to schedule a tour. We do in-person tours. You can see uh, two of the residence halls that's uh, College Hall and the Academic Village. You will see both of those on a walking tour of campus. As far as cost is concerned, we do have obviously in-state and out-of-state, um, roughly around 14,000 for in-state students and then, a, and then about 24,000 uh, with a private room and meal plan. This is the total maximum potential cost that you can incur living on campus before anything like financial aid and scholarships. Nursing tuition is a little bit higher due to the clinicals that are associated with the program, and that would be that 17,000 number, almost at 18,000 there. That combined with the private room and meal plan number is going to give you the number here at the bottom, which is 284. Now that we talked about financial aid, about 93% of our students on our campus receive some kind of financial aid. We do have a unique program on our campus where if you are qualified for the federal Pell Grant that you are qualified for through the FAFSA, Pitt is matching that dollar for dollar. The maximum uh, Pell Grant last year was around $6,200. If you receive that Pell Grant, Pitt will match that up to that amount, no strings, no taxes, no, no nothing like that. Um, there's no academic requirement for it either. It's just another way Pitt is trying to help you reduce your costs. And about 50% of our students receive some kind of merit-based scholarship as well. And that starts at a 3.2 GPA or higher. So that's all I have. I wanna thank you all for your time and thank you for uh, joining with us today. And I'm gonna turn it back over. Thank you, very great information. The next representative is from Kaiser University flagship campus. You are on mute. <laughs> Hello everyone, happy to be here with you guys today. My name is Jordan. I'm an admissions officer from Kaiser University flagship campus in West Palm Beach, Florida. My territory is Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. So if you guys have any questions following this presentation, I'll add a link um, to the chat following and you guys could just let me know if, what you guys want and I could reach out to you. Um, awesome. Why Kaiser? So Kaiser has a 40 year history of putting our students first and of providing our students with a hands-on education. We focus on attention to the students as well as the employers in the community, giving our students what we call a Seahawk advantage. Through your course of studies here at Kaiser, you could expect that you will average 15 uh, students per faculty throughout your education. Obviously, it is a little bit higher on your general educations, but once you get um, down, you know, you're on the other side of the average and they're a little bit smaller. I can't go over all of the programs with you guys today, unfortunately, but what I am going to do is I'm going to try to highlight our five largest programs, which are nursing, business, biomedical science, criminal justice, as well as golf management. While these aren't 
while these are the top programs, we offer a variety of other programs like applied engineering, cinematic arts, psychology, and many, many more. So again, if you have any questions that I don't go over, just let me know after the presentation. All of our programs are regionally accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, and we offer all, everything from an associate's degree through a doctoral program for the students. Our nursing program, we are very proud to be the number one producer of nurses in Florida. Um, now our nursing program is our most rigorous program and as such requirements for that program are significantly higher. Um, we are looking for a 3.2 GPA um, in high school, um, as well as an 1150 on the SATs. Now, if a student doesn't necessarily meet those requirements, you can transfer into this program after your freshman year with just a 3.0 GPA overall. We offer hands-on training for the TEAS test um, to all students freshman year. This is if you come in as a freshman in the nursing program or you're looking to transfer in, it doesn't matter, you could take advantage of it. Uh, we do offer hands-on clinicals at the local hospitals. The difference between a clinical and an internship is that you do have professors present. So you're not just being thrown to the wolves there. Students must pass a background check for on-site clinicals. So that's just a little thing we like to highlight, you know, when it comes to that. Biomedical science. So this is going to be, you know, for the students looking to get into the medical field. You know, whether it's, you know, just a stepping stone for you to occupational physical therapy, dentistry, pre-med, whatever that may be, um, veterinary medicine. Um, this is a great program for you. Um, in fact, it's very hands-on. Our pre-veterinary students do work hands-on with the horses. We have an equestrian team on campus and we have the stables for them. And the classes actually work with the horses throughout, you know, um, during their time at school. So you're gonna be leaving school with a hands-on, you know, idea of what you're gonna be doing. Nice to see if the, if the animals like you or not beforehand. Now for business administration, this is, while it's a very general degree program, there can get very specific when it comes to concentrations. We offer nine, management, hospitality management, human resource management, international business, marketing, finance, automotive management, which is actually on the rise right now, as well as entrepreneurship. Now for business administration, depending on what you're looking at as a high school GPA, you can qualify for a four-year MBA program. So what that means is when all of your classmates are graduating with their bachelor's in business administration after four years, you could be leaving with your MBA. Oh, I just wanted to hit on uh, Seahawk Tank as well. It's a pitch competition. Again, we'd like to be as hands-on as possible. So if any of our students do come up with anything, whether it be you know, an idea or an invention, they could go and pitch it and get, try to get funding for their research or their product. Golf Management Program. It's a great program for anyone looking to work anywhere within the golf industry, whether it's golf instruction, whether it's uh, golf course operations, whether it's facilities management or anything like that, um, as well as working for companies like Titleist and Callaway. You have the opportunity to learn in the classroom and on the lesson tee from PGA and LPGA faculty with exceptional credentials as well as through our state of the, uh, the our practice facilities, students are given the opportunity uh, for success in academic, professional and personal lives. A lot of people say their game improves throughout this course um, as well. Now, as part of the golf management program, we also have a partnership with Impact Zone Golf, which is they offer um, a certification along with either your associates or bachelors in golf management that students can partake in. All of these are, you know, not necessary, but if the student wants to take advantage, it's there for them. Some of the courses that they play are Okahili, Park Ridge, Osprey, South Winds, John Prince, and Martin Downs. Now, just went over some of the programs. Now, it's how are we, how are we gonna make sure that your, your child is successful? We're gonna online free tutoring available. You could click in and just sign yourself up right away. Professors also do have office hours, as a, and we also have a dedicated career service team that helps the students with applying to, you know, with their applications, with their, you know, interviews or anything like that that they want. 
suite style housing, uh, 24 hour security with AC, cable, uh, TV and Wi-Fi. Students are allowed to bring cars on campus and we're located 10 uh, minutes from downtown beaches. We do have an Olympic swimming pool, driving range and esports facility. All are open to our students throughout their time at school. We are a proud member of the NAIA Sun Conference and we actually have, are very proud of our students with their, oh, sorry. 3.02 average athlete GPA, um, which shows that our students are just as successful on and off the field. Combating the craziness of COVID, we are SAT and ACT optional for the upcoming year. Um, we are lucky enough to have kept our doors open and we plan on doing so again, regardless of something you know huge coming up. So if you are someone that doesn't like necessarily being online, you know we never closed down and our students were able to stay on campus throughout the year and all the craziness. Um, Unfortunately, we're out of time. Awesome. Let me know if you have any questions. Great, thank you. Just a last minute reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A um, before we hear from our last uh, presenter. Uh, so our next pre presenter is last, but certainly not least. And I'd like to introduce the representative from Texas A&M University at Galveston. Hi, everyone. Good that you were able to join us today. I am Vera Walker. I'm an admissions counselor here at Texas A&M Galveston. And uh, we are on the island next to an island, uh, which is Galveston. We're next to island. We're on the Pelican Island. So you have to cross two bridges to get to us. So here's what our beautiful campus looks like. This is an overview. And uh, there's the bridge. You can see that right there. That's the Pelican Bridge that leads us to what you see where we're located as Pelican Island. And uh, we're a small school, uh, 16 to 1 faculty student ratio. We, Galveston is very known for its uh, seafood and live bands and historical district and then bike riding on the beach. So water, water, water here, even on our campus, which as you can see, we're surrounded by water. Our classroom is the ocean. So most of our degrees, if not all of them take place in, in the ocean. Once you're a student here, you are automatically, you have a fishing license. We are rich in flounder here. Uh, which is a very good tasting fish. Students fish here all the time. Um, we offer 13 degrees. We are not a big school. We are specific in marine and maritime life. And here in our degree programs, you will see that we are marine and maritime, but everything with an asterisk are the things that have license option. License option means for those students that are interested in getting uh, their license to drive unlimited tonnage vessels. You can do that through uh, specific majors here. Now, marine biology, that's a study of uh, the marine life from the whales to the smallest microorganism, including coral and seaweed. Uh, people who are interested in vet school can also obtain this degree. You can do uh, work in a zoo, game warden, or conservation. Marine fishing, marine fisheries, as well as marine biology, you can actually earn these two degrees at the same time if you choose to. And in marine fisheries, they do culture, culture and grow their own fish. Marine sciences, now that's the physical side of the ocean. So if you're interested in the underwater cave systems, underwater volcanoes and trenches, marine sciences is for you. Coastal and Environmental Science and Society, that's our environmental science degree. So if you've heard of the uh, Gulf of Texas oil spill, when that, uh, when that spilled all in the Gulf of Mexico and it messed up the marine life, fish and all that ended up dead, that you would be that person that would deal with what affects the environment. Maritime studies, that focuses on the history and archeological literature and communication of politics. We have marine transportation. When I was talking earlier about uh, driving your own ship, this is the degree where it's required that you get a license option. 
but it is the legs of the ship. It's unlimited tonnage. We're only one of, there are six other schools in the US like us. And uh, so we're the only one on the Gulf of Mexico. For as long as we are around, we will always need logistics and transportation. Our cars and cell phones will always use some form of transportation. So whether you go commercial or research, marine transportation can be for you. Marine engineering technology, that's the heart of our, uh, a heart of our degree. It keeps the ship moving. It, you're the person that will fix it when it breaks. We also have uh, marine ocean engineering. The catch here is that you have to apply at our Texas A&M College Station campus, but you would take courses here at the Galveston campus because we're on the water and we have what you need for your hands-on interactive learning. And so the bridge that I showed you earlier, it takes two bridges to get to this, to our campus. Uh, those bridges were built by ocean engineers. So we have some very popular minors. Marine biology is a very popular program. Uh, Maritime Academy, which is the marine transportation I just showed you, those are very popular. But we also have diving technology and methods. That's a very popular program. Students minor in that quite a bit. Now we have anything centered around the marine and maritime life. We also have business administration, which is our 3.2 uh, degree for an extra year. You get your master's as well. Um, you can do the coastal and environmental science and society. So we have some very popular. We can, uh, with the minors between us and College Station, come up with two. If you choose two minors, you can come up with a university studies degree for those of you that are not quite sure what you would like to major in. So this is the license option, what we offer. We have NROTC here, we have drill and ceremonies, we have the deck officer license program. As I said earlier, it's unlimited tonnage. So for the freshmen, so we are non, we are test optional for the fall of 2021, spring 2022. Uh, executive team has not passed down what's going on for fall 2022 at this point. Application, there's an application fee. Uh, if you decide to use your SAT, ACT scores, they will be reviewed for scholarship purposes. If you're not going to submit them, then by all means, I encourage you to fill out the scholarship essay uh the scholarship essay here are some of the deadlines we have one coming up may uh first for fall 2021 and uh the scholarship priority deadline is coming up as well also we have for ocean engineering they have their deadline which which has passed already so we have the transfers for those of you who have earned 24 transferable college hours. Uh, your spring deadline, is, your fall 2021 deadline is June 30th. Um, we ask that you you can submit unofficial transcripts to admissions at tamug.edu. I will leave that in the chat box, but so that you would be able to uh, upload after you submitted your application and we can have a decision to you with the unofficials giving you time to submit your officials. So take a picture of this with your phone. Uh, this is our information on how you can contact us. Again, I will put this in the, uh, in the chat box for you to give with me if you have any questions. Thank you so much, you guys. You have a good evening. Great, thank you. Um, all great information shared tonight. And so I'm excited to um, pivot in now into our Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, we do have some time left. And so um, I invite the presenters at this time to turn on their cameras to unmute themselves. And we'll go ahead and get started with our first question, uh, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the order in which you all presented it. Yes, um, so my advice would be, well, certainly visit every college you're interested in, but specifically when students are on campus, I, always I tell people all the time, that's when you really know if that college is a good fit for you. Um, you could see yourself there for the next four years of your life. Also, um, I recommend to not use your school email for your in the application process. Um, we, I know us personally, we've had a lot of problems with that. And I know other colleges do. So either use your personal email or a lot of students will create their own email or create a, 
separate email just for the uh, college application process. Absolutely, to piggyback on that, um, please do not use your high school email just because once you graduate high school, that email may not follow with you to college. So it's right. always good to create a new one, um, but probably my best piece of advice is always ask as many questions as you possibly can um, so that you can make an informed decision depending upon which college you wanna to go to. Um, I speak for my colleagues on the screen to say that we love asking questions. It's why we're here. Um, so don't feel like you're bothering us. Um, we're here to help you navigate your college process. Um, and the perfect way to do that is ask every question you can. Um, so that's definitely a good piece of advice I like to say. One thing I really wish somebody would have told me when I started looking at colleges was just because they don't have your major doesn't mean you can roll them out. That's the number one thing because you may not know what you want to do and that's fine. Believe it or not, that's actually okay not to know what you want to do for the rest of your life at 17 years old. <laughs> Take a look at everything, at everything, every school offers that you're interested in, both physically and major related, and work the information backwards to what it is that you essentially need to be successful, both academically, socially, and uh, emotionally as well. Those are the big three things you need to be successful in in life. So um, that is the one thing I really wish somebody would have told me, and I want to pass that on to you. My biggest advice just to piggyback on pretty much everything everyone has said up until now is A, visit the school. You'll never get a good idea of where you're gonna be calling home for the next two, four, or six, whatever it is years until you've actually stood on the campus and looked around. Um, from there, again, just, it's a very tough time. We understand that. I think I speak for all of us that, you know, we've dealt with students, you know, we understand that guidance, you know, is having issues, you know, some schools were online. If you have any questions, again, that's what we're here for. And please don't hesitate to reach out. We have one job to do. Uh, my advice would be for the undecided students, uh, by all means, you guys take a career assessment early take it more often to kind of gauge at least what you don't like. Uh, career assessments can be a tool. It may not give you the answer you want, but it'll give you a good starting point. And I would also say uh, another thing that I would do is take a look at degree plans. So I've had a student interested in business, but don't realize what type of math or how much math is in that degree plan. Don't be scared to look at the degree plan flip, uh, check the course description, because if you sign up for business and math is so not your subject, you may want to know that early. And um, for those of you that are on top of it, which would be a heap different from when I was a student in school, I was undecided and I was many people. But for those of you who are decided, decide if you want to be in a large classroom, a small classroom, I, I know I determined really fast that I did not want to be a number. I needed to have that interaction with my instructor. I needed that interpersonal stuff. So I found that to be very crucial in my retention and staying, feeling comfortable, you know, find out what, what mode you fit very well. You know, if you have a tendency to be good among the crowd or not, that would be my advice. All great advice. Um, it's always great to hear directly from those who are working um, at the respective institutions and uh, know firsthand uh, what would be helpful for those who are uh, currently applying or looking uh, to apply uh, rel relatively soon. Um, great, so we have our second question, which is what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? So my favorite tradition is our Oozeball tournament. Um, it's a big volleyball tournament, uh, but it's played in almost a foot of mud. Um, so they're playing music and you can imagine how crazy it gets. It's always fun. Definitely one of my favorites is probably graduation because all of the faculty and staff members are there. And it's that moment where we get to see you at your moment you've been waiting for, for perhaps two or four years, depending upon what degree you plan to go for. But it's just that moment of we were there to help you get here and you created and became who you were um, and seeing all your efforts pay off and seeing you grab that, that grab that diploma and walk across that stage. It's it's a really fulfilling um, feeling because it's like I helped you get here and you in the way we like to say for our Manor Blue Jays is 
you're spreading your wings and now you're ready to fly. Um, and that's always for me a very rewarding tradition at Manor. My favorite tradition is what we call the Big Bang. Every year at uh, the beginning of the semester, or actually the beginning of the full academic year, the Sunday before classes start, we have a, when COVID does not exist, uh, we have a massive campus-wide party almost. Uh, you know, we'll bring out, you know, National Guard will come out with a rock climbing wall and an obstacle course. Um, you know, we'll have a cookout and every it's free food for everybody. Um, faculty, staff, students, uh, the president, everybody comes out uh, for the Big Bang. And then we finish it all with, uh, you know, a round of fireworks at the end of the night once the once the sun goes down. It's it's one of the most it's one of the most fun things that we do on campus. It's a really great way to kick off the semester in a fun, meaningful way, get you to be able to meet new people um, and some other faculty and staff that you might not have known otherwise. So that's definitely my favorite. I'd say for me, and I hit on it a little bit, you know, in the presentation was the Seahawk tank, which is our spin on Shark Tank. So it actually was just this week and it's great to see because you really get to see the innovation and all the different things going on with the students on campus. So the freshmen we bring in, you know, end up up on the stage, you know, proposing a big idea. And then it's like, wow, where, where has the time gone? You just were in the, before you could barely fill out an application. Now you're, you know, in, you know, creating all these brilliant things. That's incredible. So to me, that's my favorite thing. I have two favorite traditions. So being from Texas, we pride ourselves on speaking to everybody. Strangers or not, we do not need to know each other. So when we address one another, it's howdy. So howdy. And uh, see the big smile. <laughs> and my other favorite tradition is Mardi Gras. So Mardi Gras is here. It's been around here since the 1980s. And we have a blast. People come from all over, the students dress up, put on, we have a ball, those type things. I love the, the, the dressing for the galas and those things. So that would be another thing that we do every year that I truly enjoy. Awesome. I'd say that hearing all the different traditions and events on campus is always my favorite part hearing from um, all our representatives. So thanks for sharing. Uh, we do have a few more minutes left. Um, and so uh, very short though. So if we could answer this last question, very brief from everyone, um, but we'd love to hear, give an interesting or fun fact about your school. Yeah, so we live, we're about 10 minutes from the beach and our juniors and seniors, they tend to move off campus by then. Um, a lot of our off campus housing is in Narragansett, which is the closest beach town about 10 minutes away. So the people who own the houses there, they actually rent them out to our students when they move off campus. So it's a good deal for them. Um, this is definitely a hard question. Um, definitely one fun, fun fact about our campus is that um, we have a live working museum on our campus for the Ukrainian heritage um, based off of the Sisters of St. Basil the Great. Um, and we also have a live working dentist office on campus that our students um, take patients for from the community. So I think that those are probably two interesting facts. <laughs> um, I also have two really quick ones. One, um, we do duck races on our campus in <laughs> the creek that runs through campus. Um, and you just set them in there and see who wins. Uh, and the other one is that uh, we actually just got approved for a brand new life sciences building on our campus. It's going to be a huge project. It's going to add so many classrooms, a lot of labs. Um, it's one of the one of the bigger expansion projects that our campus has ever taken on. So uh, really exciting things that that's happening. And that's just recently coming out as well. So. Uh, fun fact about Kaiser, we have um, two international campuses, one being in Nicaragua, one being in Shanghai, China. So, you know, if you ever have the interest in, you know, travel permitted, once everything gets back to normal, you always have the opportunity to go, you know, visit another Kaiser campus, you know, and study there as well. So uh, here on campus, for those of you who love seafood, we actually have the lab that approves all oysters that comes in through our, our uh, coast 
for that deems it safe for consumption. That's one. And we're getting a brand new vessel that our students can go out on our summer cruises that will house 600 faculty, staff, and students. Great, thank you. That was quick, so I really appreciate it. Um, and again, uh, all the fun facts and uh, just the little quirks about each school is always great to hear. So thank you um, so much. Thank you for uh, to our presenters, um, specifically for just being here for your time and just sharing all the great information you shared tonight. Thank you all for joining us. Um, as we close, there will be a very quick four question survey that will appear on your browser. If you could take a moment to fill that out, your feedback will be greatly appreciated. And this session will be recorded a week, uh, be available and recorded um, a week from today. So feel free to check that out at strivescan.com backslash Pennsylvania. Again, thank you and have a great night.